When you visit Montmartre, you're gonna find a lot of overpriced restaurants with mediocre food and probably horrible service. But there are some hidden gems all around town. So in this video, we're gonna take you to three places where locals go and maybe some of the best restaurants I've tried in all of Paris. So, allez, on y va. This place is so charming and the food is excellent. Bonjour, deux personnes. These guys have an amazing menu with fabulous French food, but they also have some American options. So if you have some people that are afraid to try things, some picky eaters or kids, you can get a burger, you can get a fish stick kind of a burger. You can find something for everyone here, including amazing stuff. Yes. Oh yeah. And that's from me. Merci. I got a little bit of everything. <laughs> So this is the chestnut soup with a little bit of, they say coriander, but like cilantro. Mm -hmm. And I never imagined in my life that I would ever have a chestnut soup, but they're known for that here. And it's good. A little bit like maybe a mushroom soup, but not as thick. It's very, um, very thin broth. This one is a creamy, it's almost like a Lebanese yogurt. It's got pickled onions and almonds and different flavors in it. And some pepper and, and things. Oh man, that looks delicious. He said it was kind of like a hummus. So you just eat it like a spread with your bread. Oh man. Oh. It seems like a very complex kind of a thing with a lot of stuff in it, but it tastes really simple. So far, I would be very happy with the whole appetizer of this or this. And I got the terrine de campagne. So that's uh, your classic uh, French pâté, which they serve with a little pickle. So you take a little piece of pâté like this, and then you take a little piece of pickle and you can do it with your fingers. Oh yeah, mm, there's a little bit of um, liver with it. Pate with a little bit of liver, it's actually very tasty. It's probably one of the best pate I've had. Oftentimes I take a pate in a restaurant, it's easy appetizer and everything, and it's usually okay, but it's not great. This one is really good. Oh, yes. oh ho, ho, ho. yes. This french fry is mine. No, 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 that's, that was my french fry. Oh yeah, a super, super tender cut of pork mixed together with these vegetables and linguine. <laughs> I don't have time to film, I'm gonna be busy eating. Oh my God, delicious. Yeah. <laughs> like a little bit of a creamy sauce that's made with the, the juice from cooking this pork forever. How tender can it be? Oh my God. I wanna take a bite, yeah? Oh my God. That, that's it. I have it. to share. Oh, yeah. So I'm having this next time I'm coming. We're definitely coming back. Wow, this is good. And I got the steak au poivre. I have a sharp knife, but it does not look, I'm not forcing much on this. This meat looks tender. If you want a good steak au poivre in Paris, you come here. Wash your steak au poivre with a little bit of burgundy pinot noir. And that's how you do lunch in Paris. Cheers. This may be my new favorite restaurant. There is nothing here that we've tried that isn't excellent, like way above expectation. The charm, the ambiance, the quality of the food, it's definitely not as expensive as Place de Terre. You look at the, they're giving us the coffee with two chocolate bites. One for me, right here, and then one for me right there. No, oh, the big one's mine. <laughs> mm. That's good. It's so light. It's like light and rich at the same time. It's so light and just has a, it's a very subtle, powerful flavor that's oh so satisfying. So today we are going to go and eat at a restaurant called Oz, 
which is a recommendation by Vincent that does food tour. It's actually one of a stop, which is known to be an amazing small little bistro in Montmartre. I can't wait to try it. Ooh, champagne. <laughs> That's the right way to start a meal. Certainly is. This is a cream of mushroom soup made with port wine, and it has, I don't know, like little tiny shaved mushrooms. Yeah, very um, creamy, really fine creamy. It has a, a powerful, subtle taste. I know I say that a lot. It's very simple and profound. And I got the pâté en croûte, and it is beautiful. This is fine, and probably the best pâté en croûte I've had in a long time. It's delicate, it's a pâté in a, in a pastry shell. Ooh, oh, is this, la, so la. what is this? So this is scallops and beets with fennel, and I'm gonna try just a little bit of both together. Oh, that's funny how it made the, the beet made the uh, scallop red. Yeah. There's a lot of good restaurants in Paris, but from time to time you come across one where the chef just understands food. And the refined nature of the simplicity of the food is off the charts. This is one of those places. This is gonna be one of those really tipsy lunches. Fish for you. Fish for me. And the steak for the young lady. Oh! Oh yeah, I can touch it with my fork already. I know it's exactly tender. I'm expecting an amazing flavor with the au jus sauce. What I taste more than anything is the quality of the beef. This could be a great new regular place to come by. I'm telling you, I'm gonna call this my Montmartre cafeteria. <laughs> I got the mackerel and it told me all kinds of stuff about the sauce. He cooked it uh, with a base where they boiled the fish bones and all of the stuff to start the sauce. Oh wow. It's a fish that's, that's got a texture to it. It's very, very pleasant. It's not fishy at all. It's really delicate. In those restaurants when you have a chef, he's really right behind me. You have a chef that loves food, loves texture, loves flavors, and plays with it. The menu has two items today. He's not messing with 15 things on the menu. It's either fish or beef or scallops, that's it. But what he makes is amazing. Cheers to this. And this place feels like a little cute bistro in the neighborhood because it kind of is but it also has a distinction in Michelin. They have a bib gourmand, which is about the quality of the ingredients and about the chef and whatnot. So it's not exactly a Michelin star. They don't have the tablecloths. They don't have some of the distinctions that give you a star, but this is a highly rated Michelin spot. This is one of the most efficient things I've seen in France because I have a little salad in the middle and cheese all around. <laughs> yes, I am pompette. Yeah, are you pompette? I yeah. This is an 18-month comté. Oh, that looks delicious. Some people don't eat the edges. I do. Unless they're wax, I just eat it. You know Mimolette, right? I this know one. Mimolette, but I never buy it. That's from Lille. It looks a little bit like cheddar, and it tastes a little bit like halfway between a cheddar and a nice comté. It's a very nice cheese. Yeah. Mimolette is basically... Uh, it's like a cheddar that doesn't suck. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. And that clearly goes with dessert. Yeah. Oh, wow. We're sharing this or is this one for each? Check it out from this side. Look, 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 look. It's almost like peanut brittle in the cream which is a special cream. It's not just whipped cream, it's a, a baker's cream. It's gorgeous, but it's not too gorgeous to eat. <laughs> Let me take a little bit of chocolate, a little bit of, whoops, the crispy stuff, and a little bit of cream and put them all together. I know I'm messing things up. It's That's what happens. Now I can tell you've been drinking all lunch. <laughs> Thank you. 
You can really taste the orange and the chocolate. I thought it was just the orange on top. It's not a powerful chocolate flavor. The strongest flavor I have here is orange. A little bit of this. I use the other spoon, because obviously my wife is done eating. A little bit of a tuile maison. Oh, that's grapefruit on top of it. Oh, I didn't expect that. I didn't know what it was. I thought it was an apple, but it's a, uh, I think it's a pomplemousse uh, grapefruit. I'm a little drunk. <laughs> it doesn't look like an apple. <laughs> I'm gonna need my spoon back. Come on, come on. That's not what the doctor <laughs> I got them both. <laughs> if you're coming to Paris, make sure to check our 100 best restaurants to try in Paris. It's available both online and as a PDF download. I'm gonna put a link in the description and check it out and see if it's a good fit for you. Today we're headed to Coq and Feast, which is just around the corner from Place du Terre and all the touristic stuff. And this place was highly recommended by really local Parisian people. And I can't wait to see what I'm gonna get in that restaurant. Let's go. In the US, a chicken is a chicken. Right. But here on this menu, they're telling you which variety of chicken it is and how old the chicken is. So I'm thinking these guys are a little bit particular about their chickens. There's a number of days. So it says 145 days, and this one says the Corcovin is 220 days. So that, that actually has to do with how, how old the chicken was. And on average, when you're eating a chicken at the table in restaurants and everything, it's about a 30-day-old chicken. So these are actually much older chicken that have the time to eat good food and being a high-quality chicken. All right, so cheers to you. To an, another amazing lunch in Paris. <laughs> and another fabulous glass of wine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's really nice. It's a creamy chicken soup. It's not a thick kind of a creamy soup like I've had in um, in the States. You're not going to like it. I might have to eat yours. <laughs> it's very thin, but packed with flavor. I can taste the thyme and the sage, but it's just, it's just simply elegant. Oh, I got the little croutons on top of it. Love that. Look at this with the crouton. I think it's a crouton. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow, yeah. Mm. Mm. This is so delicate. This is poultry livers uh -huh. on a crispy, crusty toast. Looks like a little piece of radish in here. A combination of flavors. I would expect the liver to be a heavier thing, but that tastes really light. Yeah? Yeah. It's very simple. There's a little bit of mustard in there. It's definitely poultry uh, liver. You can feel uh, the flavor. Uh, grain mustard has a really interesting flavor with the chicken. You can tell that you have a chef behind here that likes to play with flavors again. Okay, super. That looks really good. This is coq au vin, or a chicken and red wine sauce. And, oh, you didn't see how easily that just fell apart when I touched it with the knife, but oh my God. The sauce is excellent. Like clearly they know what they're doing. The chicken alone has a flavor that's je ne sais quoi. Like yeah. it's just the quality of the ingredients coming together with the skill of the chef. So what are you trying to say? This is not a Costco chicken? <laughs> no, this is not a Costco chicken. That's an expensive chicken and it's worth every bite. Yes. What's really interesting <laughs> is if you take a french fry from your husband and then put it in the sauce. That's thievery. That is complete thievery. 
people who come here are going to have to choose between the mashed potatoes and the fries. And I just want them to know how it is each way. Have both. <laughs> Check out that. Like, it's just falling apart. Like, that is slow roasted chicken. Like, seriously. And I got the pigeon. So I haven't had a pigeon in ages. Look at this thing. Oh. You ordered it rose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I ordered it rose. You can order it well done or well done is definitely not how you want to try that. Mm. This is super fine. Oh. I rarely have a pigeon because a lot of places don't do it well. But once in a while you're in a place like this and you know they're going to do it right that it's really worth trying. It's a, like a chicken that went to finishing school and it just tastes different. Oh, that is a caramelized brioche that was recommended by a chef. It's got my name on it, that's what it is. This bite doesn't even know your name. <laughs> Come back here. I think they took that brioche yeah. And they soaked it in something amazing. Yeah. And then they put all this other gooey stuff on it. Does that taste like heaven? It does taste like heaven. And it's surprisingly light again. Why do they do that? All those desserts in France are super light. You know what's great? Is with the little pigeon that I had, I'm not full at all. It's not like, it's not super filling. Not like Cocodin, which Colleen had, which she should, you know, give up the dessert because she had a full meal. I didn't. Take it away, sir. Take it If you like this video with the best restaurants in Montmartre, next I would check out this video with the best beef bourguignon in all of Paris.